Um, but next up, I'd love to uh, welcome to the stage uh, Charles Garrett and Gautam Ravi, both of Pagoda, who are going to be talking to us about building a thriving Web3 developer network on Near.org. So let's give a round of applause for them, everybody. All right. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Gotham, uh, and I'm a product manager at Pagoda. And uh, this is Charles, also an engineering manager at Pagoda. And we're here today to talk to you about building a thriving network for Web3 developers on Near.org. Working? There we go. All right, there we go. Um, so I want to start off by talking about the origins of the Near.org gateway and kind of give you some context. So Near.org um, was introduced as one of the first uh, boss gateways um, back in uh, April of 2023 at the Consensus Conference. And it was launched to showcase a lot of the different functionality of boss and provide an example of a fully functioning decentralized application that had a really robust user experience. Like I said, Near.org was built on the boss stack. So a lot of the features that you s see in the experience were powered by different layers of the boss. Um, so starting from a user onboarding to um, near.org, they could use fast auth like D or just walk through a very seamless onboarding experience to create an account. They had the ability to um, use search and discovery functionality to look for any entities built on Boss, whether they're components, applications, posts, or even profiles. Uh, developers had the ability to uh, look at source code, fork any components that exist on near.org and publish them in their own applications and components and use the gateway as a method for distribution. Um, and kind of under, underneath all of this, we had a social functionalities that were integrated in all aspects of the experience. So any developer could create a profile, um, make posts, follow people, build their network within the ecosystem. Um, and this is all powered by the protocol at the foundation. So seven months later, um, we've had a lot of usage of the gateway. Uh, I wanted to kind of paint a picture of uh, how's near.org being used today Who's it being used by, and what are the different use cases that have popped up? So starting first and foremost, the bread and butter of the applications built on Boss are decentralized components. We have over 12,000 components that have been built, uh, published on Boss, um, and that are viewable by you know, anyone that uses Near.org today. The gateway is also a very key channel in the ecosystem for publishing and distributing applications. So we have over 250 different applications that have been published on Near.org um, that range from different functionalities like ecosystem apps, like DevHub and Horizons, um, DeFi apps, social apps, consumer apps. And so all these are examples of fully functioning decentralized apps that are being published and distributed to the thousands of users that are already on the gateway. And finally, I think the people matter the most. Um, we have over 250 monthly active devs that are publishing components and applications, as well as over 31,000 accounts that have been created on the gateway today. So we have all these people, we have all these components that are being published. Um, who is using the gateway today though? Like what are the different audiences and then how are they using it? So we've uh, really discovered three different audiences that have been using um, near.org over the past seven months. Uh, the first, as I mentioned, is kind of like our core audience, which is developers. Um, developers really use this as a, as a specific resource to guide in their development of boss applications, giving them an easy ability to discover anything that's built on the boss, um, providing them with examples of how it's been built, and giving them the chance to distribute it to the entire ecosystem. We also have ecosystem organizations and DAOs that are part of near, that are using near.org to um, mostly from like a social aspect of things to build a community and connect um, and talk to different people in the ecosystem, as well as general ecosystem contributors, which make up a majority of that 31,000 um, number that I, that I mentioned before. Um, so a lot of these uh, folks are using a lot of the social functionality that exists on the gateway today as well to build their network um, and, and meet more people in the ecosystem. So over the past seven months, there's really been two different use cases that have popped up on the gateway. The first is that near.org functions as a specific developer resource. Um, like I mentioned, there's a lot of different functionality on the gateway where developers can really you know, sink their teeth in and understand how the boss works. 
And so some of these examples are component and application search and discovery. Um, we also have a lightweight sandbox where developers can tinker with code and, and view how some things are built and get an understanding of, of how a specific component or application was built on Boss. Uh, they also have the ability to fork, publish, distribute any components and applications. And since near.org is kind of a central gateway for the entire ecosystem, it's also an important way to, to kind of wayfind and point developers to the right resources. On the flip side, near.org also serves as a, a social gateway for the ecosystem. So we have social profiles, we have posts and generate user generated content. We have a global activity feed. Um, and anything related to a social network is, is kind of on near.org today. So when you look at the gateway, when you log in as a new user, you're kind of confused as to what the specific experience is. Is it a developer resource? Is it a social network? Um, and that's something that we've been kind of wrestling with over the past months too, trying to figure out what is the, you know, the right approach for this experience, given it's a central gateway for the entire ecosystem. So what's next? We want to double down on supporting our developer audience. We believe that developers are, are you know, the key to success for the near ecosystem. Um, and we really want to build a product that caters to this audience. There's a lot of different pain points that you know, we've observed developers face when, when building on near as a new developer or even a, an existing developer. Um, navigating an entire decentralized ecosystem is difficult. And sometimes the resources and tutorials are distributed across different channels. Um, another thing that we've, we've understood is that differentiating between the quality of components and applications on our gateway is not the most intuitive process. Um, and the ability for developers to build reputation in like a, a, a specific place where everyone can view and understand you know, their role in the ecosystem is also not that intuitive. And a new developer coming into Nier will definitely have a lot of different questions when thinking about whether Nier should be the platform they, they need to build on. Um, what is possible on Nier? What has been built and what should I build? What resources and tutorials are available that will help me guide, uh, guide me in my development process? And are they robust enough to support me? And then underlying, uh, like underlying is, is there a strong community that's, that's also existing to support me? So all these questions are things that a, a new developer would be considering when thinking about joining a new developer platform and ecosystem like Boss. So all, those, all that being said, we wanted to introduce today the near.org developer network. So we're going to be taking near.org a step forward, pivoting a little bit from our approach of this kind of pseudo social network, pseudo developer resource, and going all in on, on developers. And so there's three specific pillars of this experience that I'm going to highlight in the following slides, which are learning and building, discovery, and community. So this is kind of like a mission that we, we me and Charles put together about what we think or vision, sorry, that of what we think the developer network is going to be. So near.org will cultivate a developer's growth in their journey towards building high quality applications, growing the economic potential of those apps, and moving along the pathway to becoming open web advocates, experts, and even founders. And as Ilya mentioned yesterday in his talk, founders are like the, really the key to success for how to build quality applications on Boss and the open web stack. So I want to dive a little bit into the three pillars, and then I'll pass it on to Charles. Uh, the first is learning and building. So this is really the bread and butter of the experience, what we want to be most focused on, which is providing developers with access to high quality resources and tools that will enable them to p build powerful applications. Um, I'm not going to go over all of these features, but one of the ones I wanted to highlight is that we want to provide robust documentation and tutorials that are really available um, on near.org in a structured way that not only cover front-end development of decentralized components, but sort of every, every layer of the boss stack. How can a developer use each layer to build a robust application? Another pillar is discovery. So something that I mentioned before, but really how do we help developers gain inspiration, investigate, and understand what's possible to be built on the blockchain operating system? Um, and so this really comes down to application discovery. How do we make sure that anyone can build an app, distribute it, and also help um, showcase that app on our gateway in a way that um, you know can differentiate between the quality of apps. So what's an app that's actually like a robust, a well-built experience versus one that's maybe not? Um, and so um, one of the PMs on our team, Tiffany, is doing a lot of work to um, you know build this experience out. And you actually can see a more robust DAP library that's recently been launched on our gateway. And then the final pillar is community. Um, this is one of the you know the underlying things that al always should exist in a developer's experience. 
Um, and so we're going to take the social aspects of the gateway today and transform those into social functionality that really caters to a developer's workflow. Um, and so one of the ideas that we're thinking about you know, diving deep, deeper on um, in our roadmap is, is building out a groups functionality that allows developers to create smaller, more niche communities on the gateway, um, as opposed to having to interact with you know, a global activity feed or, or like a large social network. So those are the three pillars. I'm going to pass it on to Charles to talk more about specific experiences. Yep. So why use near.org? Why be a part of the developer network? It's because near.org features the end-to-end -end tech stack of open source, common good features that form the fastest Web3 development platform for building Web3 experiences, distributing them, and getting feedback from users and developers. It's an entry point into the open web ecosystem for new and experienced developers alike. And since people learn in different ways, whether you're more of a visual learner that likes to learn from being hands-on, building experiences and getting feedback immediately, or if you're more theoretical and you prefer documentation and interactive documentation, um, we've updated this to, pr to provide wayfinding that really meets your needs where you are in your development journey uh, and, and to meet your, your learning preferences. We're making these changes, such as improved navigation, because of the feedback that we've received from our community members. You are telling us what you need for an improved experience on, on near.org uh, and to enhance your ability to be most productive. Near.org is where to go for guidance on how to use any layer of our Web3 tech stack, from RPCs and validators, nodes, to streaming data and decentralized UIs. The projects and founders that are building on the blockchain operating system continuously prove that this is the fastest Web3 development platform. You can instantly fork and customize from thousands of UI and data streaming components with built-in social and content moderation features and discoverability that works across boss gateways. You can also start small and only adopt the pieces that bring the Web3 functionality that meets your needs. You can choose from existing apps, spin up a GraphQL API, and subscribe to the on-chain transactions that interest you. Um, you can also use our De decentralized interface guidelines component library or any of the community-generated component libraries to quickly piece together a UI that meets your needs that's always accessible and available online. No matter which part of our open web tech stack that you use, know that you're supported by our motivations to nourish the ecosystem, to provide excellent resources, to incentivize additional providers to offer similar services that decentralize our offerings, and to provide thoughtful designs to offer the best experiences for developers and users alike. At a recent front-end development conference at CSS Camp, uh, I really like how Cassie of Cassie.codes explained this. She gave a great presentation on SVG programming and went into the depths of how programming in SVG is similar to programming in the document model of HTML. And she described it as front-end fills to be ever-expanding, shifting further and further into the realms of computer science. And you know, front-end frameworks are becoming increasingly depth. They can increasingly require a breadth of knowledge that feels more and more like full-stack development, meaning you've got to summit a huge learning curve before you can get some UI and get some feedback and see some changes that you want to affect with minimal effort. Decentralized UIs, we're aiming to change this. Decentralized UIs on Near's blockchain operating system makes this more simplified. We provide rich UX capabilities with composability and one-click deployment to community managed infrastructure. And you still have the option to learn as much as you want and go where your interest takes you, from staying on the front of front-end development to the middleware and data layers to the back-end supporting blockchain infrastructure. And what smart contracts did to web services, we want to do to front ends, making them autonomous, composable, always accessible, and cryptographically secure. This ensures that you know who generated the content that you're looking, looking at. There's provenance. You can trace back all the UI and data components. You can see how they're being used and assessed by the community and determine what, may, what works best for you. Um, let's see how easy it is to find a component that we want to use. So I can go to our DAPS application library, and let's say I want to build a component that shows the history of widgets, and I want to quickly revert code. I can go to develop, 
or I can go to search and search for history. Boson.near's widget history component looks interesting. So I can open that and preview it. This looks to give me most of the functionality I want, different commit versions. I can further inspect to look at the code, check out the source, look at the statistics to see how often this component is being referenced, how often it's updated, look at its dependencies, get an idea of the code that's being used, and say, yes, I want to use this. Let me fork this component, start to customize it, check out the preview, build upon that. That looks good. I can save that online. And now I have a complete component that works, and I can build my app on top of that. At Pagoda, we are stewards of public good services that form the stack of our open web platform, the blockchain operating system. All of us are designers, developers, engineers, and product strategists at Pagoda. These are our motivations. You know, we're here to provide these services. Here's another view of that tech stack that shows the, the services as opposed to the motivations. So at the foundation here, we have NIRS always available blockchain supporting multiple L1s, our data aggregation platform, RPCs, indexers, query APIs, and what we just learned yesterday about supporting data availability, easy user onboarding with account abstractions, fast auth SDKs, and meta transaction relayers that allow developers to pay for certain users' actions and further abstract away from the user that there's even a blockchain behind the experience that they're enjoying. And then there's discovery engagement on our near.org and near.social gateways where we have our application libraries, social feeds, content moderation, social DB, search, and web push notifications. And of course, there's these centralized UIs where you can reuse and customize from a variety of components and applications. So how can you get involved? Anything that you see, you can influence. It's all open source. You can own it, you can customize it, and you can change it. If you see something you don't like, you can improve it. You can affect that change with as much effort as you're willing to spend, from simply submitting a form to tell us what's wrong or what could be better, or opening a PR to submit the code, which I would love to see, <laughs> and affecting that change yourself. Um, you can also get involved by simply being a flyer on the wall. Since we work in public, everything we do is on GitHub, from our roadmaps and planning, technical discussions, you can be a fly on the wall and see how we're working, learn from that, and even influence our future roadmap by getting involved with communities like DevHub uh, and joining our community town hall meetings. Thank you. Here's a, a couple ways that you can stay in touch with Gotham and I, our near social addresses, and this QR code will take you to uh, the Pagoda platform page where you can see all of the, the formal announcements for everything we're releasing. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions? We have some, yeah, we have a couple minutes. Any questions? Yes. So, sorry, could you speak up? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. So. The question was, how do we satisfy GDPR? And, and you need to be able to delete content, support the user's ability to delete things. How does that work on blockchains when things are, are ever present? Um, so we really implement that at the gateway layer, where at the gateway, we are hiding content. So if someone, for example, a gateway user, we've had a few requests where people want to exercise their right for data deletion. And we delete that from the areas where we have the ability to. For example, any of the services where we're storing any auxiliary data related to the user, we can directly delete those. And then the, the components that you see that, that uh, implement our social feeds, on all of those you have the ability to report, hide content at different layers, similar to other social networks. So you can hide something from your own feed, which essentially stores, that, stores some information locally and ensures that you don't see that. And we also have the ability to hide accounts, block accounts, or block specific posts that will prevent them from being displayed on any gateway that is using that exact component. That doesn't remove them from the blockchain. We can't do that. But we can prevent the further distribution and make it harder to access the content. Anything else? Thank you. Cool. Thank you.